Give me a little pat back. Okay. Welcome to the Finance and Governance Meeting of Stanley Town Council. We'll start off with number one on the agenda. Do you have any apologies for absence on? We do, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Stevenson is on holiday. Uh, Councillor Nair has an engagement and Councillor Nicholson is unwell. Councillor Christie is not present. Thank you. Um, do you have any declarations of interest and any items on the agenda? Okay. Um, do we have any procedural or appropriate, appropriate announcements from the Chair? Have you got any announcements that um, we should be going on? Uh, just the usual ones, we're recording the emergency meeting and please make sure your phones are set aside and switched off. <laughs> I don't know whether the hour is now, but it will be alright, nobody ever rings me. Um, <laughs> do, we have any public, do we have any public participation? We don't have any members of the public here, but does anybody submit any questions? Nothing has been received, Chairman. Okay. The item number five, confirmation of minutes. Um, do we agree that the minutes from the finance and governments meeting held on the 11th of April 2018 are correct? Does anybody have any, any queries or any matters about that? You accept them, Alex? Is everybody else happy enough to do that? Yeah. 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 Six, um, the accounts for payment and the bank reconciliation. Do you want to say anything about that one? Or? The only thing I would say is uh, just to on the on the bank reconciliation, which is attachment D. Um, there's a slightly unusual entry in there where it says receipts not banked cleared, and you can see there's three payments there for the first of April. Uh, that was cash in transit, so it was cash taken the previous year, banked in this year, so it needs to be. Journal back into last year, which is why it's shown as a minus. So, just to, if anyone was wondering what that was, that's all that is. Um, otherwise, I don't have any comments unless there's any questions from members. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any any questions or any queries? Is everything that up? Can I just share that? Yeah. I mean, it's a set of figures, and I say this on a regular basis. We need to get information that's <coughs> going to really tell us something. But just to list the numbers, and the numbers do add up. When you look at the uh, income expenditure of what's gone in the bank, uh, I'm quite happy to show uh, from an accountancy point of view, figures are right, and I'd move that we accept uh, B to G. Okay. Second to the Anybody else got anything on that one? Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll move on to item number seven, the youth services budget. Do you want to talk us through this one, Alan? Yep, uh, I will, thank you, Chair. This is one of a number of items which are duplicated from last night's agenda due to the, the way we have, you know, one delivery committee and one finance committee. Um, essentially, in January, when we set the budgets, a, a budget was set aside for youth services, um, and it was, uh, I believe, in the medium term plan to set some money aside for that. But what we haven't done with all of the work we've been doing is actually developed a strategy <coughs> to allocate that expenditure. Um, so it's, you know, now that we're sort of getting towards the end of a lot of the restructure work and a lot of the work that's been going on to, to change things in the civic hall, et cetera, et cetera, it's time to sort of revisit that and find out a way to get that money allocated so it can be, so it can be spent. Mm. Um, so Chris has been asked to consider how it is allocated Last night, the Projects and Initiative Committee put forward a recommendation that uh, obviously the Stanley AAP also has some funding, £9,000 I think for youth funding, which is what's left in the county's youth budget. And the proposal that the, uh, the Projects Committee put forward was that I, we, the staff, should liaise with the AAP and actually look to see if there's a mechanism whereby we can pull our budget with their budget and we have a joint committee made up of town councillors and maybe some AAP members to look at allocating that funding um, so we get a bigger pot. That was their recommendation, but obviously this committee is taking a completely different view to that one, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, do we have any 
Okay. Um, so, uh, I just want to move to accept the recommendation from last night um, to get it gives us more pound for the book, you could say, and give us a bit of budget to spend the money more reasonably rather than just having it our own £15,000. They've already got a policy in place to where they can approve the grants as well, so <coughs> it saves us duplicating a youth fund. So, um, I don't ask myself a question about sorry, because I want to do one thing. Um, what about um, one of the things that we've heard in the past was that um, when the wasn't even the last council, maybe the one before, worked with the AP, they didn't feel like Stanley Town Council got um, the recognition that they should for putting whatever they put in. So, how are you going to sort of manage that if you? Just gonna, not on daddy's door, tell us what you're going to have, joint publicity or something, I don't know. I've, I don't know, I've, I've, maybe that was the case, I've not experienced that really with working with the AAP. I mean, I've been a member of the AAP law since I've been here, and we've worked with them on things like the Heaviside Parade. I don't think we got short change on the publicity for our involvement, and actually, you know, we were my father junior partner in that, financially, but I think we, we actually did rather well out of the uh, publicity surrounding it. Um, so no, I mean, I've got no issues working with the AAP. I think the, what we need to be clear on is whose funding criteria is going to be applied because our funding criteria are less bureaucratic than their funding criteria. I think one of the points that Councillor Marshall made, Councillor Carl Marshall made last night was that actually it might be easier for them to give us their money to allocate through our rules because our rules are a little bit more flexible than their rules are. Um, because obviously for anyone who's ever filled out a neighbourhood application, it's an incredibly bureaucratic process. Um, and I think that's part of the conversation that I need to have with Dan O'Brien, if that's what the council puts forward, yeah. about actually how, what, what that panel looks like and who allocates the funding. Yeah. yeah. Okay, anybody else? Okay. I'll go along with that. As was said last night by Carl, we need to keep an element of control, don't mind equal numbers on a committee. But if we ran that committee, it would be much easier for us to administrate it. But they would help the direct input into it. So it, it does give us a larger pot to, to work with if we want to go along with that. So I'd move that we leave that to the clerk and he works something else and comes back on it. Hopefully we can get a good agreement there. <coughs> Are you happy with that one? Is that what you mean? That's what everyone's happy with. Is it Jim? Who is out second? Yeah, okay. Anybody else wants to come in on that one? Everybody's happy enough with uh, working with the EAP? Okay. So, there's another job for you. Yep. So, we'll move on to attachment H, which is the creation of environmental services budget. This is another item from last night. It is. It is. And the report that's, that's been tabled is... It's the same report from last night. I mean, it, it was... I've had to pull the report apart because all of the workings out, if you like, relate to the staff instruction which has not yet been signed off. So I did send those round this afternoon. Um, and really, I don't think you need to dwell on those too much, but they basically just show you that the, how the maths has been worked out to arrive at the figures that I've put forward and I've, I've actually put into the budget. So you can actually do a sanity check. You can compare the, uh, the, just sort of the full budget printout from the budget set in January with this, and you'll see that it totals up to the same number at the end. And if you apply the assumptions that I've made and I've detailed in that email about how I've calculated this and estimated the salaries, hopefully you'll agree that I've done the maths right. So that, that's why it's provided. Obviously, if members have questions about it, when we get to part B, I'm more than happy to answer those. Um, basically, the purpose of this report is, at the and it says it in the report, but at the beginning of the year, the council, when it was setting its budgets, had a lot of unknowns, a lot of uncertainties. We didn't know how much the warden service we wanted to provide was going to cost. We didn't know what the local government pay award would look like. We didn't know what the costs were associated with TUP and the groundworks staff would be in. And, and primarily, we didn't know what the new structure the council wanted to implement was going to come out at the job evaluation. So we had to make a lot of estimates, uh, best guesses at the time. And, and as a result, we, we ended up putting all of our salaries onto one line uh, and we ended up just putting numbers in against certain budgets like in wards and environmental services without any worked out revenue budgets to support that. So sort of specific budgets allocated to things like equipment, maintenance, uniforms, that kind of thing. 
So what I've done now that we do know the answers to all of those questions, we do know what the payor looks like, we do know what the evaluating jobs have come out at, we do know what the water service is going to cost us, and we do know what the, the cost of tube healing that the environmental services has been, uh, I've been able to then go back and revise the salary estimates, and then I've just broken down some budgets, created some budgets, uh, and some new cost codes to support those services. So uh, what I've done is I've brought, I, I, it's, and this is obviously, this needs to be agreed, this approach needs to be agreed by, by you as a council. But what I've done for the purposes of this is I've split the salary budgets four ways. I've left the office staff, and by that I include myself, the new deputy town clerk post, Nicola, finance post, in staffing, which was which should should actually be moved into administration, but that's just the current line where they're held. I've created a new code for facilities, which only has salaries on it, because I've left all the other expenditure of facilities in the individual codes, like civic hall, packed out, handful play, food and room, etc. Uh, we've created a new environmental services cost centre. We used to have an environmental services code, but it was just one nominal with, within a within a services cost centre, when we were just paying out the services and not actually providing it in-house. So I've created a new cost centre there, which has got some budgets in it. Um, and I've obviously, I've already created a new cost centre for wardens, but I've put the salaries for the wardens in there. I've based the warden salaries because Councillor Timby flagged up, and I think you flagged up as well, when I put the cost for the warden service around to council last month when we were at the Masonic, the estimates I put around were based on the bottom of the grade, so I've put the estimates in here at the top of the grade so that all eventualities are covered. Uh, I've put in the extra 3,000 for the 24-hour service as a casual staff budget. I've put in the budgets that Ian Hall identified in, and I've also put a bit extra in to give us a bit of flexibility to do some campaigns and initiatives that we want to do as a council. Uh, likewise with the environmental services, and the other ones are just completely, are just straight breakdowns. I've also updated some bits that were wrong. We only had 7,000 pounds in to cover the cost of the police cars when the actual is going to be about £10,000 a year. So I've updated that and a few other bits that I've, that I've, that I've revised. Um, I have shared this budget and it's obviously, if members want to go through it line by line, I'm happy to, but, I've, but basically uh, what it leaves us <coughs> at the end of all that, having you know put proper estimates in for the salaries and create those cost centres, it leaves us with <coughs> about 19000 which I've left sitting on the line the old environmental services line for now. Um, but I'll put in the report, I think actually we're going to need that to cover some other unbudgeted costs that we're going to have. You know, we're going to have to buy PCs for the new staff to come on. Uh, we're going to have to pay for the by election. Best, you know, we've got a bit of spare revenue, we might as well use that rather than get it out of reserve. Um, so you know, there's a few things I'll put in the report which, which I think will spend that money. And really, so the, the proposal is, uh, what I'm asking members to do is to consider this. If they think it's okay, it's right, the right and reallocation of the budget, then accept the report. If council thinks actually no, we don't want to put those budgets in, uh, then they need to tell what they want to do with the, with the money. Second. Well, I think we should just move that recommendation from the budget. Well, I'm just looking at the figures. Is it right that we are paying out between 47 and 52 percent of our budget on salaries? Well, I haven't done the calculation, but if you look at nearly any council, most of the or, or any service organisation, most of the budget is going to be on. It's going to be salaries. I think that was that has been one of the weaknesses of, of the groundwork service, and, and you know members will know this that we had the, the the staffing capacity provided, but anything you wanted to be done, you had to dig in your pocket and find a bit of lift funding for it, or, or or someone else to put the money, otherwise you couldn't get it done. Um, and for the price of a tin of paint or a few bits of wood and screws to get a job done, it, it seems sensible that they've got a budget to do that. Well, that's fancy. Did mention cost us? Um, 
difference was somewhere fifteen pounds, twelve and a half pence each of them all mixed. So <laughs> and it probably cost it probably cost seventeen pounds to administer that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, whereas if they've got the flexibility to, yeah, to just get the go and get it done, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So is everybody happy to agree the, the budget for the, uh, the environmental services? Yeah. 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 Really? David? No, you're good. Yeah, just agree. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, the next item is item nine, um, review of internal control. Um, We've got attachments I and J. Um, we've got attachment I, which is in paper in front of you, and attachment J, which... Um, yeah, Chairman, I've got, I just... Honestly, I apologise for this. I had no idea that I hadn't, it hadn't got copied over with the rest of the papers, the, the attachment I, the internal control report, because it was done when all the rest of the papers were copied over. So, um, really, I can only apologise for that. It was just... I don't, I don't, it was only when Mark phoned me about five o'clock saying... Where's that attachment? I was like, well, but I last week at the papers, what are you talking about? And it didn't. So um, I'm just wondering, do we want to uh, um, do you want to take a little a little few minutes break so everybody gets a chance to review this? Because we don't want to be really make the decision if we haven't had a chance to. Yeah, I mean, I'll just I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll just give a little preamble as to why we do this, and, and it's a report that we repeat on an annual basis um, with the risk management statement. It's part of the. <laughs> it's part of the accounts and audit regulations. It's part of our um, of how we demonstrate that the, that the council has financial governance. So <coughs> each year we are required to to you know make a, a, a decision or resolution as a council that we have it in place a system for internal control and that we've reviewed it and that we are satisfied or happy that it is effective. So. Basically, what the report says in part one explains that and gives you the statutory references. Uh, the second section talks about our internal audit arrangements and explains what they are. Hopefully, members know what they are because uh, we do re report it on a regular basis. Um, so, we employ you know, a competent, professionally qualified, independent internal auditor. Um, we've retained the same old internal auditor now for, well, certainly as long as I've been here. We've been in contracts before the election because. Um, council meeting was worth. Was, was it? Okay, so a year before I started here. Um, and it may be actually at the end of his next contract that we want to find someone else just so that we don't get too complacent about the internal auditor, just so you've got someone else coming in to have a look. Um, but you know, that's not a reflection on Gordon's ability. I think he's a, a very competent auditor and I think he's fair. Um, and he certainly looks at whoever he wants to look at and, and gives, gives his findings. So we have that system of internal control. Our internal control policies and procedures, you know, we have the, the fundamental policies which, which you need to, to regulate the council on financial regulations and the standing orders. We have those, we, we, we follow the, uh, the sort of model financial regs and standing orders with some minor local amendments that are issued by now. Uh, we have, we do have some, a few gaps in our policy Portfolio, but I think we've recognised that, um, and, and you know it's been put into the the job description for this deputy town clerk post to actually do a complete review of the policy framework as a as a key task when they come in, and 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 uh, you know where there are some gaps. I mean, certainly the key policies are in there. We do have policies on most of these things. We do have a, a not specific whistleblower policy. Actually, we need to get one. Uh, that's one of the things that Gordon, I think, has recommended in the internal audit. We don't have whistleblower policy. We do have policies on anti fraud. We do have data protection, gifts, and hospitalities. Uh, we do have freedom of information, health and safety, and some and personnel policies. Again, there's some gaps. Um, we've had full assurances for our internal audits, uh, although I believe the ones we're going to get in the next meeting, there's a couple of substantial, there's a couple of recommendations coming through that, mainly about the policy area, just, just tightening up on those policies. Uh, we have got a separation of financial responsibilities. Payments are authorised, raised, paid in different places, and there is a clear interrelationship there that no one person can actually raise, authorise, and pay a payment themselves, and that's, that's been audited. And we have a substantial assurance on that. Risk management is another key element. We obviously have a risk management register, which we have here, um, has been. You did get that one, fortunately, which we're supposed to review each year. And, and 
obviously we have the uh, all this leads us to being able to make the declarations in the annual governance statement which goes with the annual return to the external auditors um, that we've uh, that we've approved our accounting statements and they meet, they meet proper accounting practices. We've got adequate system of internal control. We've taken reasonable steps to assure ourselves there's no potential non-compliance with laws, regulations and codes of practice which could have a significant effect on the ability of us to conduct this business. We've got proper opportunities for the exercise of electors' rights. We obviously have done that in the last year. We need to do it again this year. We've carried out an assessment of the risks and taken appropriate steps to manage them. We've got an effective and system of internal audit, accounts, records and control system, and we take appropriate action on matters raised, and we consider whether litigation liabilities, events or transactions occurring, either during or after year end, will have a significant impact on us, including in accounting statements. So that's what this report is about. It's about, it's about explaining what, our, what, what we have in place, what the, what the background is, and then... Um, enabling us to make the assertions that are required for the annual government statement. So, do you want to um, go with the two things separately? Uh, well, I think they're running, they're running together. Um, the preamble, which is I, just uh, tells you the areas and uh, the talks here. It's uh, it's got a few recommendations in there. Uh, and, uh, so I think we have to do, um, I'm just wondering, sort of really the recommendation, we probably have to look at J first before we agree I, that's what I'm thinking. That's right, sorry. So that's what yeah. you're yeah, going to say well, so Yeah, because the, if we go through the, uh, uh, the list for one, yeah. where the, the risk register, the, there's a number of things in there that uh, we need to take for interest and so, and, uh, especially around the employer liability and stuff like that, L4. And, uh, and then on page five, obviously, there's quite a preamble and different things in there with regard to uh, members and how it should operate, which hasn't always been the case, around confidentiality and things like that. Uh, so the, uh, <coughs> and the risk register goes back to Predates, but we have one of our problems being is we, we inherited uh, vacancies, which has left very few staff to uh, administer uh, this council. And I think the staff that are here uh, deserve a pat on the back for the way that we're still being able to carry on and bring, bring the report forward. Uh, the, it was a risk, uh, but unfortunately, the, the money was spent. The staffing budget was spent when we took over, uh, and now we're in the position with a medium term plan to uh, f fulfill our promise of uh, staffing in this council. So, uh, the risk management is all part of that. Uh, the motivation of staff, obviously, uh, during change and when you're, uh, when you're running with. Uh, limited numbers does make it difficult and can affect the morale to hope uh, that we get into part B that uh, we, we well I'm not going to put that right. So I would uh, accept accept the comment in the risk register. Uh, and the risk register is ongoing. It's a, it's a really a live document because you're looking at things where you at risk all the time anyway. And uh, I thank the clerk for the report. Thank you. Thank you. And the page that does, sorry, sorry, Chairman, I'm, I'm, I'm talking with you when you were talking. I'm, the page that the members do need to look at is the last page, page five. Um, I've, I've been through the majority of this report and sort of looked at the comments that were made about things like business continuities, capital records, and all this stuff, and answer the question. Page five or section C is really for members. Um, and you will see if you've read it that some of these uh, reviews and assessments are from last year because they need to be looked at by members um, and updated. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of left that for you to do at the meeting. Um, so the first one, C1, is um, conflicts of interest, ready to register interest. The comment from before was that the code contract was revised in November 2015. 
And we've actually revised the code of conduct since the last AGM because of the uh, new new code, standard code of conduct which was issued by CEDAW. So I think we should update that to reflect that. Does everyone happy with that? Yeah, yeah agreed. Um, yeah, we'll put the exact month in. Um, it says the gifts and hospitality code uh, needs to be reviewed. It said it should be reviewed before the May 2017 election and communicated to the new returning members after the election. Well, we didn't do that, so that's um, that's something that I forgot to do after the election was to make sure that we reviewed that policy. So we need to stick that into into June. Put that up to, into June for the Finance and Governance Committee, and we'll get it done then. Um, this one here, it says that the uh, the council should agree a medium-term strategic plan setting out the members' vision for the council's role in the town, and allow the, the officers to focus on the delivery of that vision without having to open up every minor decision to political debate. Well, that one we've done, mm -hmm. so we can tick that one off, and we can just say that that'll be ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, management of staff, there's, there's reference in there to the 2013 election, which basically need to come out. Um, it does say here that we should arrange training for members after the 2017 election, which we did do. Um, but perhaps, you know, perhaps, um, you know, the, the, the risk that's identified is that elected members don't understand the structure of the council and seek to make operational decisions. Um, you know, we need to consider if that's still an ongoing risk of further training or further structure would be, would be useful. The member officer protocol was something that we talked about but we've not got around to implementing. Maybe that's something we should think about bringing through this committee next year. Yeah. Otherwise, I've gone through and made my own observations and really it's for members to, uh, to pick up any bits that they feel they need picking up on. Well, you picked up anything that they, they didn't like or they needed an explanation or they thought it would be uh, substantially different. So are we all happy with um, the items that Alan's gone to one page, was it page five? Page five, yeah. Yeah, are we all happy with the things that Alan's gone to one page five to change the document? Yeah. We're all happy with that? Yeah. Uh, will we get um, the, the change document or whatever, the updated document for the, will we be able to send that out to the next meeting notes just to make sure this... I think I've said the amended version on the AGM agenda is something to be signed off with the recommendations to be okay. Great. Okay. Everybody happy with that? Okay, then. Agree. We agree that. Yep. I'll go to the recommendations and make sure. Uh, the risks identified are comprehensive. We all agree. Any omissions, we've done that. Um, we have to consider the control measures are adequate. Does everybody feel that the control measures are adequate? Are you all happy with those? Yeah. Um, and gives direction to the town clerk in relation to priorities. That's the only other thing. So what's the priorities? Well, the priorities are the things the priority, on the side. The priorities are um, to implement the restructure, yeah. to fill the gaps in the policy framework, uh, to work on the member officer protocol, yeah. get that bottomed out, and to um, make sure that we keep updating the medium term strategic plan. So I would say those are the priorities. Yeah, that sounds excellent. Yeah. Everybody agree with that? They're good priorities? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, so, moving on to the exclusion of press and public. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Ye